Hello, Anikod here, and today I'm going to show you how you can help the whole server in Rust. I'm sure every single person will appreciate it and flock from miles around to come and look and admire this creation. I'm not having anyone tell me otherwise. So, yeah. Now I'm going to show you the easiest way to make and program a digital clock for your local time. Yes, real life time, if you can remember what real life is anymore. So, let's get started. You don't need many components for this build, in fact all you really need is a power source, a couple of splitters, a few branches, a blocker, a couple of timer switches, three counters and I think that'll pretty much do it. The first thing we need to concentrate on is making a circuit that triggers automatically once every second. This is by far the hardest part and you're going to see now how easy it actually is. So start by placing from left to right, splitter, splitter, timer, blocker, branch. One of the splitters we're not going to use just yet, but bear with me. That's all you need for this part. I told you it would be simple. Now wire it up like this. The splitter out to the timer. Set the timer to one second, obviously. Timer out to the block pass through of the blocker. Splitter out to the blocker. These need power too, remember. Blocker power out to branch in. Then branch out to toggle on the timer switch. Yeah, that's literally it. That's the one second timer circuit. Now I've set up a light that'll show you what's going on and I'm going to explain it the best I can too. The remaining branch power out will be used for our seconds, which is the backbone of any clock. And I'm going to put this into the light to give you a visual. As you can see, every second there's a pulse of power, or one hertz of power if you're Stephen Hawking. Rest in peace. So how does this work? Once the timer and blocker have power going in, they're both essentially waiting to output that power. The timer out is blocking the pass through which stops power going through the blocker into the branch for one second. Remember, we set the timer to one. After that second, the timer runs out and the blocker is allowed to put power through into the branch again. The branch out into the toggle turns the switch back on again and it's fully automatic. This will just keep going on and on and on and on and on and on until the power runs out or one of the components gets shivved by a gangster naked with a stick. So now the counters. We need three of these, one for seconds, one for minutes, and one for hours. Make sure all of these are powered. This is where the second splitter comes in. Once they're all powered, it's just a game of wiring them all up correctly. Now, the second timer is the one on the right. So I'm going to put the branch out from our circuit into the increment counter, and every second it'll count up. You can set it to 60. And that means at 60 seconds, the timer will allow power through. And once it gets power from the little circuit we created, you can see the increments going up. There is a small issue with this, with how it's set up currently. Once the timer hits 60, it will output power, but it'll keep counting and keep going up. There's a super simple way we can control this. And all we need is three extra branches, one for each counter. So put power out into the branch and then one of the branch outs into the clear you guessed it when the timer hits 60 seconds and lets power through it'll basically clear itself and start again back down to zero again but remember branches have two outputs so you can use the second one into the increment counter of the minutes that means every 60 seconds it will increment the minutes up to one exactly how you would expect it to work on a digital clock then you can do the exact same thing from the minutes counter to the hours counter you don't need a branch for the hours one you could just put the power out of the counter directly into the clear and let it clear itself by putting a branch into the hours counter you could extend it if you wanted to get into counting days of the month two or days till the end of the wipe it all depends on how much time you've got to be fair probably too much time if you're making an electronic calendar so this is how you make an electronic calendar. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm only joking. See, I can be funny sometimes too, you know. So this is the clock completely set up and I know what you're thinking. 
it's not midnight so how do i set the clock well there's lots of ways and my favorite is a simple button buttons don't need power going into them they will output one power when pressed regardless and one power is all you need to increment the counters now you can do this when the timer circuit is powered you won't get electrocuted i promise Disconnect the increment of the timer you want to set and attach it to the power out of the button. All you have to do then is press the button and it'll go up to whatever time you like. If you accidentally get too carried away and you go too far, disconnect it and reconnect it to the toggle that decreases the counter. Simple. There is a couple of seconds delay for the button to reset and if this is too much for you, well, let's face it you don't want to waste your time waiting for a button when you've got more important things to do <sighs> comedy and sarcasm in this video this week i do know how to treat you all now if you don't want to wait you can use a pressure pad instead they output power too and you just have to walk back and forth over these to set the time on the clock they do reset in a fraction of the time of a button so i know what you're thinking again Anicod, the components are everywhere, they'll get destroyed. Well, you can put them anywhere you want. You don't have to set it up like I have here. The wire tool does reach a good distance. You can even make a clock tower if you wanted. I'll enclose it all off now and make it look a little neater for you all. Time lapse time! And there you have it, a fully functional clock. Now, I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you've learned something new or you found it even a little bit entertaining, I would love it if you could smash that like button. If this is the kind of content that you like, feel free to hit subscribe and I release a video every week or every time I can. You can follow me on the usual social media like Twitter, Instagram and all that good stuff. All the links are in the description down below, so take a goosey gander. If there is something that takes your fancy, give it a little click on the old mouse and it'll take you straight there. Remember, as always, if you have watched this far, let me know you're a legend in the comments down below and I'll give you a little Anicod heart. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.